Yay Networks. Now we have multiple cameras and obviously multiple microphones on this podcast. You saw and it last week. It looks so cool. It looks so cool. And so now I have to do a clap before we record every episode. Hannah is the certified registered clapper. I get myself in the perfect spot where all three cameras pick me up. I clap one giant clap. It is so satisfying. It's adorable. I woke up at like 3 a.m. last night. I heard this noise. I was like, what is that? I get up. I go to the other room. Hannah is in our podcasting <laughs> room practicing her clapping. Shane. That had not be too good. This is not funny. I was not doing that. Thank because you so she much. She wasn't good at it to start, <laughs> but she's getting a lot better. I'm getting better. No, it is really fun. We're back with episode five. Episode five. Wow. We have some big news in this episode. We do. We just had a big, our, our what are, like our culminative, is that a word? Cum- cumulative? Cumul- no, culminate, culmination. Cumulonimbus. <laughs> the culmination of all of our testing. Yeah. For IVF. Our results. Our results. <laughs> yeah. We But like we did all of these tests over the course of a month and then we had to wait for a meeting with our doctor for all of the results at once. So this was a huge meeting that we were excited about. No, I was, and ner- I was terrified. <laughs> okay. I was nerve wracked. I was excited for it. <laughs> Shane was terrified for it. And we had it a couple days ago. So we have all of our information like pretty much sorted out now. Which we're going to share with you. And yeah. much more importantly, I got a new pair of pants. Oh, are we going to start with your new pair of pants, Shane? you want to share? Well, it's the biggest thing happening in our life uh-huh. right now. I thought you were going to say that later in the episode, we're going to tell a hilarious story about me getting extremely high in Denver. Oh, we are doing that. We're going to tell you about the timeline. Yeah. And it got just absolutely. It was horrible. Way too high. It was horrible. And I had to save her. Yeah. (laughs) It was when we got our matching tattoos. If you listened last week, then you will know all about how, why we got our tattoos and this is when we got them. Yes. And... Back to my pants. Okay, yeah, yeah. Back to your pants. Don't know why you're like trying to get away from of course, the pants. Of course. And then I were doing her smooth shopping, mm-hmm. and we wandered into I don't know. I think it was like Abercrombie. It was Abercrombie. And, Abercrombie Kids, to be specific. Well, I'm a very tiny human. <laughs> Hannah lifted from the table mm-hmm. a pair. I don't know the material name. Like of, Sherpa. It, you should have said anything, and I would have agreed with you. <laughs> Well done with Sherpa. They felt like a cloud yeah. in pant form. Yeah. And she rubbed it on my face. Yep. As one does in a <laughs> public a, place. In a public place. And I cried. <laughs> I tears of joy. I moaned. And I said, those need to be on me right now. So I stripped down no. in the middle of the no. store. Shane. Back to reality. Back to reality. We uh, purchased the pants. We purchased the pants. <laughs> I went immediately home and put them on. Yeah. And I've not taken them off since. Yeah. They're you're not, not the ones I'm wearing. I was right now. just about to say, but you're not wearing them right now. That ruins the, the, the fun of it a I little know, bit. I know, but. Um, but that's because you I. You were wearing them, them too much. I wore them too much <laughs> and they had to get washed. Um, but they're life changing. And now I ride with comfort and style and Sherpa. Yeah, you love them. And at that same store, we bought a second pair of pants that were dress pants. Okay, right now, Abercrombie has this thing, at least in the kids' store. I don't know. We didn't go into the adult store. Pause. Everyone listening right now is like, get to the IVF. What? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Sorry, but this is important. This is really, this is a wild story. We bought these pants. They have a campaign thing called Cozy Dress Up, which is really exactly what Shane needs. Are you a salesperson for Abercrombie? No, I'm not. I'm just saying Shane needs. (laughs) Shane wants to wear sweatpants 24-7. He doesn't always want to look like he's wearing sweatpants. It is his ideal Situation to have sweatpants that look like corduroys, which is what this was. When you sit all day, yeah, a pair of jeans yeah. are going to wrinkle you up. <laughs> and oh that God. becomes quite painful <laughs> after a while. So I need a bit more freedom, a bit more plush. So these were really soft, stretchy pants that looked like dress pants. Yep. Shane was very excited. Overjoyed. We purchased those, brought them home, and found out that the security tag had been left on the pants. <laughs> Now, that, does, that has almost never happened to us before. You know, most times you buy clothes, they remove the security tags. We were like, well, this is really annoying. Now we have to bring it all the way back to the mall to have it removed, okay? The next day, my mom and I went to a different mall where she needed to buy uh, glasses, like f- reading, like visual glasses, okay? So she's trying on the glasses. 
On the way out, I stop at a store and I purchase the sweatshirt that I am wearing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm like, oh my God, I saw the salesperson actually wearing it. I needed it. I went into the store. I bought it. I bring it home. The security tag is still on it. I'm beginning to think that you might be a thief. (laughs) What are the odds that now we have two items in our home? Like, can you hear it? I hear it. It's right here. Don't you're not explode it. It's right here. The cops are on their way. They're tracking you. I it was hidden in the pocket so the person didn't see it. Now we have two items that we need to bring back to two different malls <laughs> to have them remove the security They're tag. They're gonna be like, ma'am, you're on a list. <laughs> we were told That is so suspicious. <laughs> my favorite part of all of this is that when I bought my pants, mm-hmm. We obviously didn't know in the mall that they left <laughs> oh, yeah. that they left the security tag on. So we're going to other stores. Every <laughs> store that I go in, I'm setting alarms off. Yeah. At the door. And we didn't have Shane's backpack on his chair just because we didn't. And so I was like, you know what? That the backpack must cover something in your chair that sets off alarms and now it's not on. Scientist hand out. So over you're there. setting off alarms. Nope. Shane was just carrying around I a was security just carrying, tag. Like probably stolen merchandise. Yep. Thank God no one actually like stopped us. No. Whenever I set off alarms, yeah. people are like, oh, it's the chair. Like, it makes sense. Fine. It's a giant hunk of metal. Something in there might as well set it off. Nope. It was the security tag. <laughs> On the stolen item. I can't wait for you to go back and return and like, get this resolved and yeah. just see their face when they're like, did you? I know. I have the receipts. Thank, thank goodness yeah, I have the receipts. you can receipts. fake your receipt. Shane, no, you can't. Don't say that. I have the receipts. <laughs> Don't make me nervous about this. <laughs> <laughs> they right. are going to lock you up. Should we move on to the IVF stuff? Yeah, so let's get to the boring part of the show. Okay. <laughs> do you want to go over your results first or my results? Why don't we do yours? I okay. feel like mine were a bit more scary. Yeah. Um, well, who knew? Like, we didn't know anything about mine. We knew that yours were probably not great. I was expecting the doctor. Well, just go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so for my results, um, they were checking obviously like every single thing that they could check in my blood Mm -hmm. all of that was good except for my vitamin d was insufficient (sighs) so i'm now on vitamin d supplements you get along with everyone else in the midwest right now i know but not you outside well i have profound amounts of vitamin d (laughs) person through my veins i don't have muscle but i have vitamin d (laughs) and why is that i do not understand i definitely go outside more than you (laughs) so Oh, you do take a milkshake every night, like a protein shake. You probably get every vitamin you need. Don't, don't, no. Why do you get I every vitamin? I am inherently better <laughs> than you in areas of vitamin D. So vitamin D was the only thing in my blood that they found that was bad. Um, and then they did the ultrasound. Oh, and the sludge. <laughs> <laughs> they did the ultrasound and some like hormone things to see how many eggs I have left and then also how many follicles. So like the eggs, they don't have an exact amount because there's like a ton of them. Wait. What, Shane? What's a follicle? Are you serious? Yeah, what's a follicle? You don't know what a follicle well, is. I, I did, but now I don't remember. We did all of those learning modules and you don't know what a follicle is. And I passed those <laughs> tests with flying colors. Because I was the one clicking the buttons. there were a lot of different words. Mm-hmm. The follicles are in the ovaries, and however many follicles you have, like most of them will grow an egg during an IVF cycle. That's oh, okay. how they knew how many eggs I would Got probably it. get from a cycle. Got it. So normally only like one follicle is stimulated per month and you drop one egg, but IVF, they'll do all of them. You know, they're like, come okay. on, as many eggs as possible. Okay. So they think that I have between 14 and 20 follicles, so that's about how many eggs they think I would you get. You're just riddled with follicles. <laughs> Uh, but that's an estimate just from an ultrasound. Is that the thing in your ear? Oh my gosh, Shane, you are out of control. You I'm, need to simmer down. I'm in a bit of a mood. You're in a mood. I'm feeling follicle You really are. So the doctor was happy with my side of things. I also got genetic carrier testing done. I knew that I didn't carry SMA. We did that testing like three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> uh, but this time I did the whole panel that shows pretty much everything that they can test for in this test, which is a bunch of different things. I am not a carrier for any genetic uh, conditions. And so our children will not have those specific genetic conditions. Good Most you know. likely, you know, Good because you know. there's always a chance it was wrong. I feel like there's the modules taught me that the mo- <laughs> they were like, just so you know, it's on a hundred percent. Just so you know, we're going to test you, but don't even like to do it <laughs> because it can be wrong. So whatever. Um, and then we moved on to my yes. portion. I think the doctor was doing that on purpose. Saving yours. My news was a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Um, the big thing here was 
whether or not I had enough viable spermies, mm -hmm. which is the medical term, um, <laughs> to perform IVF, basically. Yeah. So I was going into this appointment, like, ready to find out we can't do it. And then that's mm -hmm. just the thing that we have to figure out together, you know? It was going to be something. Yep. The doctor said that in their, their analyzation, is that a word? Analyzation? Yeah. Yeah, analysis. Analysis of <laughs> my sperm. I have very, very, very few yep. viable sperm, but... But just caveat, enough. <laughs> just enough. Just enough to make it work. Yep. She said that it will be one of their more complicated male cases. Yep. But she was confident in the plan um, and that I did have enough to hopefully make it work. And so. we are getting their lead embryologist. We are. Because she was like... They're bringing out the big guns. This embryologist is going to be sitting there under a microscope, hand-selecting <laughs> the, you know, 20 best sperm <laughs> on the day of. That person is going to know me better than <laughs> anyone on earth. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so that's our news. That's our IVF stuff. We are now in the process of looking at our schedules. We have a bunch of travel coming up that we planned yeah, years at, ago. Let me look at our schedule here. Um, busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's pretty intensive. We need to be here for those couple of weeks. And so we're selecting our weeks now. It's not going to be for a bit because, again, we booked out we you know, our, it, yeah. our time a while ago. So, And we're not in, like, a huge rush for this to begin, mostly because I'm not really in a rush to give myself injections. <laughs> but it, it'll come pretty soon. And I just want to thank the people who have left comments saying that, like, you know, this is a very private thing and, like, don't feel the need to overshare. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a very delicate balance yeah. that we're working with here, you know, having this huge life thing that we're going through, but also wanting to tell you about it. Yeah. So we're going to – we're just going to – Keep being careful. Yeah. I think especially <laughs> once it comes to actually doing the IVF, uh -huh. we'll probably make it a little bit more private yeah. while we're, you know, we're not doing it live streaming <laughs> injections <laughs> and waiting for results. Yeah. Uh, but we will definitely keep you updated as we move forward. Yes. And so with that, let's take a break and then move on to the time that Hannah oh boy. got a bit too rowdy. In I wasn't rowdy. I was... Basically the asleep. The time that Hannah got a bit too sedated <laughs> in Denver. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we are back, and I'm holding in my hand a copy of Shane's third book. Guys, I'm an author. Did you know that? You really are. If you're, any of you are new, I'm also an author. I want to read this sometime. It looks pretty interesting. <laughs> You still haven't read my first book, have you? I did read your first book. I have read most of this one, but I, I don't think I finished this one, honestly. That was supposed to be a joke, and now I'm like, actually, I don't think but I you did. you actually like, typed it for me. Do you remember that? Yeah, I typed this book for you. I I, was, so I basically wrote it. You made, Anna's an author. Um, <laughs> well, she's going to be. We're working on a book together. Yep. But this is my third book. It is called Strangers Assume My Girlfriend is My Nurse. Yep. And it has lots of stories about Hannah, specifically... One where she got very, very high in Denver, and I had to save her. This was another really big formative moment in our relationship. You'll hear about it. Um, but Hannah is now going to read for you yeah. this story, and we're going to offer extra flavor and insight of from course. our memories as we read. Of course. Now, if you have this book and you'd like to read along, this is on page 185. Are at least, doing a read along? At least in the paperback version. We're doing a read along. It's in the road trip chapter, <laughs> um, which is called Stank Tour, obviously. <laughs> tell them why. Uh, tell them Shane, why we actually, told them that. We have t-shirts, matching t-shirts that say Stank Tour on them that Shane got. He called it that when, like, this was pre-YouTube, pre-everything. This was just for us. This was a big road trip. Did you say that? Yeah, so this was oh. our month-long road trip uh, about six to eight months, six to nine months before we moved in together, mm -hmm. we were still long distance. This was us being like, are we really compatible? Yeah. You know, to, to move in together because once Shane moved across the country, it was pretty much like, this is it for life. So <laughs> we were making sure that a month together on the road was going to be good. Yeah. You should really find out a lot about compatibility by going on a month long yeah. road trip with someone. Yes. And Hayden was doing all my care. Yep. So we were seeing how that went. Yep. 
And it was so, so fun. That yeah, was, I mean, yeah. that was just like a bonus of it. The main point was like, we really wanted to go on a road trip. Yeah. I had just gotten back from studying abroad for four months. So uh-huh. this was our reward for oh, we surviving. Were, we were deprived. We were deprived, we were of, deprived each other. of each other. This is the Denver, Colorado section of the road trip. Yep. Should we, should we begin? Where Hannah descended into actual jet yard mayhem. Yeah, <laughs> I really did. Okay. Do your best Shane impression. <laughs> what do you mean? When I'm reading this? from my perspective. I, no, I will not. In Denver, marijuana is legal for recreational use. For those of you who didn't know. Also, anytime that I speak now, this is not in the book. Yep. I'm adding flavor. Oh, great. <laughs> so Hannah and I decided to give it a whirl. My mother just put the book down to send me a disapproving text message. <laughs> I'll spare you the cringeworthy details of actually purchasing the THC laced gummy bears from the pot shop and bring you to later that evening when, (laughs) after ingesting what we both thought should have been enough to give us a high, we were feeling sadly disappointed that nothing was happening. Pause. Do you remember buying those gummies? How, like, stupid we felt? I kind of do. We had no idea what we were doing. I know. And they had so many questions. I know. And we were like, look, just give any, I don't know. That's really what we said. We were like, we just want something that tastes good. We're innocent babies. We don't know. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The golden rule for edible weed products is to give your body plenty of time to digest. A common mistake that first timers make, we were told, was not giving the edibles enough time to work their magic. People don't feel instantly high and think they've purchased a dud, so they take more, and then everything they've taken hits at once, which can be a pretty scary experience, we were told. Understatement. We broke the golden rule. (laughs) Despite ingesting enough weed to kill a small cow, I was miraculously unaffected, which must be some freak symptom of muscular dystrophy, a hulkish immunity to weed. I maintain that that is true. Yeah, that's (laughs) true. It's your metabolism. But Hannah was not so fortunate. That makes it way less fun. When you say it's my metabolism. Okay, yeah, it's your superpower. Thank you. (laughs) Hannah was not so fortunate, and it turned our night in Denver into one that we, or at least I, will never forget. I do remember at least most of it. Your your memory is clouded. It's it's definitely clouded. clouded. Some of it is horrifying. (laughs) Some of these memories are... Some of it's not reality. It's just (laughs) memories you've conjured. (laughs) All right. It began about halfway through our dinner at an upscale bar in downtown Denver. I asked Hannah if she was feeling the edibles yet. Now, there's a detail. Pause. There's a detail in this book that it's it, a detail in the story that is not in the book. What is this detail? This is unclear as to exactly what happened. We took the gummies. We ate the gummies oh, right. in our hotel room. Right. Okay. Probably around like 4 p.m. Actually, we took them right before we got the tattoos. So that was probably like 1. 1 p.m. Okay. <laughs> then, I don't know why I'm trying to offer. I know. Time. It's Shane who was like, when did we get married again? Okay. So uh, 1 p.m. we take the gummies. Then we, we go get tattoos. Then we go get tattoos. I'm hoping that they're going to kick in at some point. Two hours later, nothing. Okay. Now we're walking to dinner. Dinner is a 45 minute walk from our hotel. We arrive at dinner and now I am angry. These gummies have not kicked in. It's been two and a half, three hours. Oh my what God. is going on? I forgot. You took more there. I ate like six of them at dinner, Shane. These are 10 milligram gummies. <laughs> That is so much. I ate at the dinner table. I began to think that weed was not real. I was like, well, these didn't work. This is fake. So I ate, like, I ate the rest of the package, which I think was six. Yeah. Maybe eight. So by now you've had about 80 to 90 to 100 milligrams (laughs) of THC, which is, if you've never done this, that is a lot. Like 10 milligrams is enough to knock you out. Yeah. I cannot even imagine. Uh so, <laughs> yeah, thinking back, this is really shocking. So that's what happened. And everyone who's disapproving right now, we were young and dumb. And it was, we it was fun, an and it was legal. Yes, it was legal. Have you ever had alcohol? Because I, I haven't, really. And alcohol used to be illegal. Yeah, well, I'm disapproving of any of you who have ever had alcohol. Wow, you're being very judgy. If you're disapproving of me. If you're not, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to give like, I was just trying to give a Contest. little, Con- yeah, Here like we a, hmm. we love everyone. well, maybe I judge Whatever you. Whatever choices you like to make, <laughs> do what you like to do. That's very true. I do not judge anyone that drinks alcohol. I hope people know that. Okay. <laughs> it began. So this is what I'm saying. It began. That's what I'm referring to. I had just had a ridiculous amount of gummies. She took lots more gummies. It began about halfway through our dinner at an upscale bar in downtown Denver. I asked Hannah if she was feeling the edibles yet. I don't think, she contemplated, but I can't feel my legs. Seriously, or are you just being dumb, I asked. A few seconds passed before her eyes found mine again. What? (laughs) 
What, what, I said. Her stare wandered across the room. Hannah, can you really not feel your legs? She turned her glance back to me with a visible amount of effort. I feel like I keep waking up, like everything you just said was a dream, but I'm awake now. What did you say? I don't like this. F this was not a good sign. I'd never eaten edibles before, but I'd been around plenty of people who had, and I knew the classic signs of having eaten too many. It was only a matter of time now before the all-encompassing sluggishness pressed itself heavily upon her body and mind. She was about to become a zombie, a really stupid zombie, and we were at least a 45-minute walk from the hotel. We were so far from the hotel. Yeah. And I don't know why, as we get into it, mm -hmm. the idea, the, the concept of a taxi. We didn't think of that in New York City either. Never occurred to us. We didn't know that taxis existed We yet. were like, well, we walked to the restaurant, yeah. <laughs> so we need to walk home. Well, an accessible taxi is really difficult. Like, you're right. We didn't know. You're right. It would have been an hour to get that taxi. Yeah, but still. And doing it while you're high would have been really challenging. The poor taxi driver. So we'll get there. So that's why. Okay. Hey, why don't we try to finish up so we can head back to the hotel, I said, keeping my voice light and breezy, lest my worried tones scare her into a bad trip. I was so worried that you were going to begin to freak yeah, out. Yeah, in public? Uh-huh. Oh, I was my like, God. oh, please, please, please. I was panicking. I was being so gentle with yeah, you. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> her stare was blank, her eyes drooping already. She spoke in a slow, quiet whimper. Oh, I don't like this at all. I feel like I'm watching myself and I can't feel anything. <laughs> I can see myself talking. Is that bad? What did you say before about my phone? <laughs> Your phone? I'm not sure, baby. Hey, let's eat up and head out, okay? Are you full? I think if I just lay for a little, and she began leaning over in the booth. Guys, she <laughs> began to lay down. I remember that. In the booth. Like, she was about to lay down yep. and go to sleep. <laughs> I had to be like, hey, no. I thought it was fine. <laughs> you can't sleep here. Come on. I was <laughs> like, why not? You were like, but it's comfy. But I'm so tired. Hannah, we can't sleep here. We need to go back to the hotel, okay? You're probably going to feel very, very sleepy, but that's totally normal. I need you to stay awake until we get back to our room, okay? Think we can do that? The waitress stopped at our table so and I'm I- talking to a five-year-old. I know. The waitress stopped at our table and I asked her to bring the check. Hannah was wearing an expression of pure panic as she lost further control of her faculties. She seemed on the verge of crying. How long was she standing there? Did I have time to reply? I remember asking you that. <laughs> you were like, did I do okay? Did I answer her? I felt like it was the conversation. I remember being like, I don't think I responded to the waitress. And yeah. I felt like she was there for 10 minutes looking at me. I was like, I handled it. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what she thought of me. I was probably just wide-eyed sitting she there. She thought we were a perfect pair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You did great. I just asked her to bring the check. On the way out, Hannah needed to use the bathroom. <laughs> Poor you, Shane. Are you remembering all this? Yeah, but like me being like, I need to go to the bathroom uh -huh. and you being like, are you serious? Like, Jesus, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I waited for her outside the door. When she came out a few minutes later, she said, I didn't wash my hands. I was afraid I would forget you. Okay, let's try to walk back to the hotel. Our journey was quite an adventure. Her heart was beating a thousand miles per hour, she reported, which I knew was a normal symptom of too many edibles, but which felt to her like an impending heart attack. I do remember that. It was mm -hmm. crazy. And I was so thirsty. That was the biggest, well, yeah, but your biggest fear was your heart. You were yeah, like, it was pounding. Shane, I'm seriously having a medical <laughs> crisis here. And I was like, I know it feels like it, but you're not. You're, <laughs> you're okay. A medical crisis. <laughs> she was beyond panic. She didn't have the energy for panic. Instead, she melted into a state of resigned terror, like walking through a living nightmare. We took it one block at a time. Some blocks were better than others. <laughs> You're so dramatic. <laughs> Several times, she insisted that she just needed to lie down for a few minutes, and it physically pained me that I couldn't let her. At one point, her reflection in a glass window scared her enough that we had to stop for me to explain reflections and remind her of our goal of getting back to the room. That's just you, hon. It's like <laughs> now when our dog barks at yourself, you know, in a window. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, it's just you. Look, wave your arm. See, you're I waving. remember watching the reflections in the windows because it was like city. So uh -huh. the whole thing was windows. I remember watching myself and looking at the way I was walking because I felt like I was like I, I was doing like manual walking where I was like one leg one leg and you were learning how to walk yeah and it I was like this cannot look 
normal. Like this cannot be right. Like people must be thinking this is weird. And I was like looking at my reflection to be like, am I walking like a, like a toy soldier? Like it felt so off. <laughs> On another block, she became insatiably thirsty, but her water bottle, <laughs> sorry, had seemingly disappeared from my backpack. <laughs> Parentheses, it was there. It was there. I swear to God, it was you not there. You my butt bag for like 15 <laughs> minutes. You were like, Shane, it's not in here. It's not in here. I'm like, Hannah, I saw you put it in. The water bottle's in there, please. I found it the <sighs> next day. I dug for so long, I, I remember. We kept onward. What should I do with this? She asked, holding her phone out toward me. That's your phone. You just need to hold it. It's too heavy. I remember that too. I couldn't figure out where in my arms or hands I should hold the phone. Everything was confusing you. <laughs> like, I was like, what? just hold your phone. Keep I, going. Could, I remember holding it out in front of me like, I don't know how like to a, hold like this. A plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> my favorite memory, this is in the book now. Yes. My favorite memory was when a severely decrepit woman who had to be at least 106 years old staggered up to Hannah on the sidewalk and leaned into her face. May I talk to him? That was good <laughs> Did voice you like acting. that? that it, well, I needed to do a voice because, like, it was horrible. Like was, that, yeah. two inches from your face, uh -huh. asked the woman, gesturing at me. <laughs> Hannah looked at me like legions of bloody demons were massacring thousands of innocent children before her eyes. She had zero ability to process what was happening, but it was scaring her. So when the woman proceeded to grab my arm and scream prayers of healing, all we could do was take off in a new direction. <laughs> Hannah holding back tears and using my wheelchair as a walking aid. I, I was. That was the worst case scenario. Yeah, what? What are the odds of that? I don't know. But we were approached by someone that really needed yep. to pray for me. And she began to scream. She like She grabbed my arm yep. and scared me. Yeah. I was completely fine. I remember you were backing up trying to get away from her. It was out of a horror movie. I was like, oh, now I have, now I have to handle this? Yep. While Hannah's in incapable <laughs> of handling this? <laughs> it was horrible. All right, back to the book. I don't like this. I don't like this, she repeated. <laughs> we made it back to our room, and I asked Hannah, what's the plan? We'd been practicing her answer the whole way home. We had been. Yep. She nailed it. Get your laptop set up for you before I get in bed. She executed the plan perfectly before falling asleep for a solid 16 hours, only waking once when I roused her from sleep to lift me into bed around midnight. I do remember I woke up the next morning and I had never felt better. It was yeah. the best sleep of my life. Beautiful sleep. Yep. <laughs> Our experimentation with edibles was a failure, but as I watched Hannah sleep that night, monitoring the consistent rise and fall of her chest, my concern for her well-being was intensely palpable. Constantly being on the receiving end of care, I was not accustomed to that feeling of taking care of someone. So many times I have worried that Hannah was being burdened by my care. When I vocalized those concerns, she always refuted my fears. Not knowing what it felt like to be in her shoes, though, it was easy for me to dismiss those statements, writing them off as something that she had to say because we were dating and it would be cruel not to say it. However, on the night of Hannah's epic plunge into edible-induced hysteria, our roles were slightly reversed for a few hours, and it made me realize I'd do anything to keep her safe. Suddenly, it seemed so obvious to me what she had been telling me all along. When you love someone with your whole heart, there's nothing you won't do to keep them safe and comfortable. It's not a sacrifice, and it's not a burden. It's a natural instinct. The next morning, while packing up our suitcases for the next leg of the road trip, down to Texas and Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, and back up to Pennsylvania, Hannah brought up a topic we'd discussed with dreamy eyes many times, but which now felt realistic in a brand new way. While lifting me into my chair, she said, we need to live together. The, the end. end. A beautiful reading. A beautiful reading. Thank you. A beautiful and hilarious story. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone made fun of Hannah. No. We're going to go to a trip break. Yep. And we'll be back with... Oh, boy. Hypothetical Freaks. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> and we are back, and it is time for your favorite game, <laughs> Hypothetical Freaks. This is the game where we say things that we should do in different scenarios that are... That, that would be something that a freak would do. It's a game that we play yep. in our normal life when yes. we're approaching an event yep. that is scary or stressful. Or just, a I mean, we do this a lot. It helps us relax and laugh about things that might not be fun. Yep. So we have an event coming up 
that is, it's going to be fun. Yeah. But we're a little bit nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Hannah's leaving me. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going away for five days. Yes. With your maid of honor. Yes. I'm going with my friend on a girl's trip. Shane will be here uh, with his brother having a boy's vacation. I, I said maid of honor because, but that's not how I refer to her <laughs> oh, normally. Yeah. But this is like the bachelorette party yes. that you never got to have. Yeah. We've been planning this for a while in terms of like, we should really do that bachelorette party yeah. you know, thing. Now it's just a now girl's it's just trip. Like just a fun, yeah. But, but Hannah's going away and like, she's been the only one doing my tear for four years in a row now. Almost five. But yeah. there has not been a night yep. that we have not slept in the same True. bed together in four years um so you know we're excited about our respective girls and boys weekends yeah or we, but it's a little bit scary it and is so we've been making up funny hypothetical things that we could do to laugh about it and you know what's funny is with this friend that i'm going away with she's who i played this game with the night before i flew to pennsylvania to meet shane for the first <laughs> really? time you remember we made the list yeah i showed it to you after we made a list of like 50 things i could do to freak out shane's family yep which included getting onto the dining room table yep during dinner yep uh, it, it included a lot of things. That would have been a good one. There were so many. I mean, I should find the list. It was a great one. Only speaking in sing song. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do to freak out, you know, my brother and your best friend? Well, I don't know how I'm going to deal with not having you around. Like, my caregiving instinct is going to go unmet. Oh, you know, that's like your identity. Yeah. Like, I've been caring for you every day. So what will I do with my urges, my caregiving urges? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to tell my friend that I am going to need to perform some of her acts of daily living for her. If she would let me carry her into bed, if she would let me brush her teeth, mm -hmm. if she would let me... When you guys are out at restaurants... Feed her. You can feed her. Yep. You're very good at feeding people. I am, and I, need, I think I need to do it. So it's going to be important for me to continue acts of caregiving while I'm away from you. I like that. Are you going to bring an extra wheelchair? <laughs> Because it might sell it <laughs> in your mind a bit more if she's also in a wheelchair. Can you please use this? Maybe, you know what? I mean, bringing a wheelchair is admittedly a bit excessive. I can rent one. Bring a stroller. <laughs> Put her in a stroller. Push her around San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> I think for my brother, the thing that I'm like really most going to miss mm -hmm. with you being away is like our... Intimate moments. I don't mean like sexual. Mm -hmm. I mean like, you know, when you're helping me take a shower, mm -hmm. like that's a very close moment between us. Yeah. I'm going to have him shower me three or four times a day. <laughs> Just, I, I mean, it won't be the same quality <laughs> of intimacy, but I'm going to make up for it oh, with quantity. Of course. So every three or four hours, hey, Andrew. <laughs> I'm feeling stinky again. I know, I know you're tired of seeing me naked, <laughs> but I would like to shower. I really need this. I know it's the eighth time today. <laughs> I'm going to make up, like, carry things that... That I do for that you? That you do, that you don't do. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say that I need my my drinks <laughs> stirred every so often. Like, the minute he sits down... I'm going to be like, Andrew, are you steering my soda? <laughs> Why would I steer Hannah your soda? It. Hannah's always steering my soda. <laughs> it helps it go down easier. Say that you have to switch shoes every hour <laughs> or, <laughs> or I, your feet get sore. Yeah, it's the butt. Oh, and the foot rubs. <laughs> you know, I get very sore in the feet. Yeah. And so Hannah does a medical mm -hmm. rub every night, <laughs> three or four hours long <laughs> with oil. Um, and I know it's weird, like we're brothers, whatever, <laughs> but get in between the toes, you know? <laughs> Don't be afraid to lean into it yep. a little bit. And uh, another, you know, more messed up thing mm -hmm. I could do. Oh, boy. Your trip is, what, a week away? Uh -huh. About, I'm not going to shower oh. <laughs> until then. Same. So that when he gets there, he's <laughs> like, was she taking care of you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going to say, no, this is just my daily. <laughs> this is from last night. <laughs> I shower eight times a day. <laughs> uh, see, this is fun. I love laughing about yeah. stressful things. Yep. Do you feel better? 
I, I do feel better. I feel wonderful. I think we have a great plan in place. All these things are going to really help. If you're watching this on YouTube, maybe leave a comment. Like what hypothetical thing Hannah and I yeah. could do for this scenario. Your idea. We'll probably find some really funny ones. Yep. And maybe we'll like shout them out or yep. something next week. Yep. All right, everyone. That was episode five Ooh. of Junkyard Mayhem. That was pretty mayhem. Do you have a good... Uh, Tagline to get us out? Well, please remind everyone yeah. what they are now required <laughs> to do by law. Now that you've listened to this, you are required to leave us a five-star review and maybe a nice comment as well, like a nice review. We are watching all of you. Yeah. And we'll know. Or a comment on YouTube. Depends on where you're watching this. You, your course of action will be different, but just do something nice for us. Do something nice for us. <laughs> Jeez. All right, everyone. <laughs> It is a junkyard out there. Take your clothes off and roll around in the filth. Embrace your inner dirty damn. These are, these are getting worse. Good night. <laughs>